This video is supported by Beyond the Barbell, a small organization looking at bringing awareness to men's mental health. More details about that at the end of the video, but if you want to support the cause, donate in the link in the description. Globally, on average, one man dies of suicide every minute of every day. The rate of male suicide is highly alarming. Three out of four suicides in Australia are by men. But this statistic is not just isolated to a specific country like Australia. According to the IHME's Global Burden of Disease Study, 90% of the inhabited world share the same ratio of male suicide, with some countries like Poland, Romania, and Venezuela having a 90 plus percent of suicides being recorded as male cases. This is November, the month of Movember, a charity that supports the three major underlying causes of men's deaths around the world, suicide, prostate cancer, and testicular cancer. Now, why is someone like me bringing awareness to a subject like this? Two major reasons. One, I'm a man. It's pretty fucking obvious. But two, because 90% of my viewership are men as well. But why is this an issue? Why are more men taking their own lives? Well, I've brought it down to three underlining causes. Physical appearance, society, and mental health. And today, we're gonna to talk about all three of these topics and what you can do to maybe someone near you or even yourself to help bring your mental health up to scratch. Let's start off by talking about physical appearance in men. Being a man physiologically is much easier than being a woman. Men don't worry about things like menstrual cycles, hormone imbalances, equality. We generally have it, quote unquote, easier. And our pathway to life don't really see many specific struggles that are based on gender. However, in both the animal kingdom and in the real world, men are under the impression that they are supposed to look a certain way, lift a certain amount of weight, have a six pack abs, defined muscles, and be quote unquote alpha to attract female companions. And any man who doesn't fit into this criteria, any man who carries excess fat or doesn't fit the persona of Captain fucking America is considered beta. They're not a real man. On the outside, being a man seems like a walk in the park and many females out there would openly trade having a vagina for all the exciting things that come with it for a fully functioning penis. However, statistically speaking, being a man is far more deadly than being a woman. Over the past 100 years, men have been thrown in deep into many deadly conflicts that have rocked the world as we know it. World War I. World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. These major conflicts, regardless of what side fought, have defined to society of what a real man looks like. Now, I know most of you could probably agree the perception of a male at the moment is someone who's strong, fit, confident, fearless, and of all things, attractive. But it sounds like Prince Charming to me. Even throughout any of these global conflicts, men were portrayed as fearless, warriors, but many of them were seen screaming in their foxholes, begging for their mothers because the horror of war was real. Things like post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD were real. However, were never adopted as a clinical term because that specific generation didn't believe in mental health. But if we fast forward to our current generation, the same perception of what a man is, is still there. Even though times have changed, men are expected and feel pressured to portray these qualities. Yet, when they are unable to reciprocate what society needs, they are labeled as weak, beta males, pussies. With the pressure of being physically fit, strong, confident, attractive, and fearless, with the pressures of society's idea of what a real man is, we focus on the third and most essential reason why men decide that their life isn't worth living. Mental health is a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her own abilities. They can cope with normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. Mental health is a voice in your head, the ability to wake up in the morning, the ability to perform tasks, enjoy life, be confident. Mental health is being happy with the way you look, the way you feel, the relationships in your life, and most importantly, who you are. Having good mental health is the ability to reach out to others, the ability to talk, 
about your issues openly and confidently, without fear of judgment. Having good mental health is the confidence to say no, the confidence to not allow other opinions of others to deter you from your task, your goal, who you truly are. Having good mental health means sharing your emotions against what society thinks. Whether the increase in male suicides has a direct correlation to the things like social media, workplace bullying, or cyberbullying, the inability to share basic emotions with others because of the fear of judgment, the social pressures of drinking, taking recreational drugs, gambling, and the sense of self-worth and self-esteem. It is apparent that men struggle with being themselves. One of my favorite quotes of all time that describes men's mental health in a nutshell is a man's mental health is like his castle. And a man struggling with his own demons is a castle that's under siege. But what can we do to make sure that ourselves or our mates aren't experiencing symptoms of poor mental health? It's quite apparent that a lot of men struggle being themselves. But what can we do as individuals, as our mates, for our friends or even for ourselves to help improve this ability to speak out, ability to be more confident in our own selves. What can you do to change someone else's life? Well, these five steps will definitely provide you with a guideline of how to improve your or someone else's mental health. Starting with number one, talking about your feelings. You're a fucking pussy. Pussies don't cry. Little bitch, why would you fucking say that? Men don't cry. Men don't talk about their feelings. These are some of the phrases that restrict or even stop a lot of men from talking about their own emotions to each other. Talking about your feelings isn't a sign of weakness. It's part of taking charge of your well-being. Talking can be a way to cope with a problem you've been carrying around in your head for a while. Having someone listen to allow you to feel more supported and less alone. This works both ways. It also might encourage friends and others to open up to you. It doesn't mean you need to sit down with your loved ones and have quote unquote that conversation. I find my favorite place to talk about my mental health is while driving. Your attention is focused forward so you're less likely to feel judged. Number two is regular exercise or keeping active. Regular exercise is awesome. It helps boost things like self-esteem, gives you confidence, allows you to start your day well. And I always find beginning my day with a good workout or a workout routine means that no matter what happens in the remainder of your day, no matter how shit life can be, you've at least covered and completed one of the most important tasks, which is looking after yourself. This not only keeps your mental health good, but this keeps your physical health good. The better you look, the better you feel. The better you feel, the better you are. And the more likely you're able to control the demons living inside you. Number three goes pretty much side by side with number two, and it's eating well. Your brain needs a mixture of nutrients to help support healthy growth, as well as keeping your mindset intact. Good eating habits not only feel better for our body, but give us things like better skin, better eyesight, better heart health, and allow us to perform day-to-day -day tasks with maximal results. One thing I always think about is if we appear better, we feel better. If people compliment our appearance, it gives us a sense of pride, a sense of self-esteem, and allows us to attack the day as best as we possibly can. Number four is good influences. Having good influences in your life will directly impact the way you feel, think, and behave. They say that the five closest people in your life will dictate how you act and what you become. So if you hang around five negative alcoholics who gamble all the time and hate their life, you'll become the sixth. However, if you flip that script around, you hang out with five super fit, super energetic, super outgoing people who love life, love to joke, and always have your back, you're gonna be the sixth as well. And if you don't believe me how important being in a good environment is, let's look at the Americans in the Vietnam War. In 1971, there was public concern that habitually using soldiers would return from Vietnam and abuse drugs at home. In response to that anxiety, the White House implemented Operation Golden Flow, which mandated that all servicemen subject themselves to urine analysis before boarding planes back to the United States. Should a serviceman fail to pass his drug test, he would be required to stay in the country for detoxification, only to be released back to the United States upon successful testing clean. 
The anxiety that America had about the mass addiction returning to America's shores proved misplaced. Whether a result of Operation Golden Flow or a sign of more casual usage than initially reported, an interview survey commissioned by the White House Special Action Office for Drug Use and Abuse found that usage and addiction rates essentially decreased to pre-war levels following soldiers' return home. What does all this information tell us? That being removed from the environment essentially fixed the problem. How does this translate to your mental health? Sometimes certain tendencies in our own lives can be influenced with, with our self-doubt, our neglect of our mental health. Changing scenery can be a massive way to help change our own mental health. Number five is accepting who you are. This is quite possibly the most important thing you can take away from today. We're all different. None of us are the same. So why is it that I find that people try and act a certain way to impress certain people? If you be yourself, people are more willing to come to you. They're more willing to open up to you. They're more willing to accept you for exactly what you are. And that is you. If you be someone else, you're going to turn into someone else. Their tendencies, their negativities. Whereas if you be yourself, you can be more open, more confident, and people are more attractive to confident people. It also means you don't have to hide your emotions. It also means you don't have to be something you're not. You can enjoy the things you are. And if you are yourself, you're more likely to attract people like you. Men of the world, you're not alone. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to share this video so more men out there can get the help they need. Remember to support the cause. Donate in the link down below to help men's mental health and the month of November. Now, Beyond the Barbell are holding an event on the 28th of November, which is a Saturday. It's called 42 of 42, where four of the members of Beyond the Barbell are performing 42 workouts in honor of the 42 men that take their life every week. They reached out for me to create a video to help bring exposure to the specific topic and to help raise awareness and donations to help support men's health. If you're not willing to support the link, any t-shirt, any ad watched, any ad revenue made from this video will go directly to Beyond the Barbell sponsored link. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys out there stay a beast.